Can I just uh, get introductions for all four of us here? I'm Mike, Agus, Wave, yes, um, Body, Satwa, yeah, and Sadi. We are the four Wiki Sorcerers. If you have Wiki Source questions, please uh, contact us or buttonhole us at any point during the conference. But I'll start with some examples and then hand over to the others for comments and questions. The goal is to try to get through our slides reasonably quickly so we have lots of time for discussions and questions. Let's see if that works. Okay, um, who here has ever used Wikisource? Right, edited a uh, book in Wikisource? Or, yep, great, most of you know. Okay, so this will be a raw introduction for many of you. So. We wanted to run this session because many Wikimedians don't actually know what Wikisource is, even if you use Wikipedia or Commons a lot. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Great. Off we go. So let's, uh, let's run through what it is. So Wikisource is one of the different Wikimedia projects, just like the others here. I did not know what Wikisource was two years ago. Three? Yeah, two years ago when I first started using it. But as it says, it's a free library. So it's a repository for works that are freely reusable, so um, public domain or released under a Creative Commons license. The works, most importantly, have been transcribed and proofread and to make digital books, digital texts, by volunteers. So Wikisource is a collaborative project where a public domain or open licensed text, usually a book, is transcribed and proofread by a community of volunteers and then are made available for several different things. One is that it can be just downloaded and read as an e-book or it can be used as a reference now in Wikipedia articles that anyone can click through and read the full work, which is very useful for a reference. Next one. Okay. So, to one of the things that you have to do with Wikisource, first of all, is to upload the work into Wikimedia Commons. So you can get the, you can scan the work yourself, like I did with this one, or you can pull it out of the Internet Archive or from any other source. But the work has to be able to live, and all of its images have to be able to live in Commons. So that means it has to be available under U.S. copyright law. Okay. So currently, this is a pre-1929 volume, so it was able to go into Commons. But some of the images in the work might be copyrighted. They might not be actually available under open license, depending on the work. That's a trap. Okay, so you upload the PDF, or usually, of the work into Commons, plus all its images. Okay? And then you pull it into Wikisource, and this is what it looks like when you pull it into Wikisource. So there's the work images, and you get, Wikisource will generate a complete listing of all the pages, plus any blank pages or, te or images, right? And at the moment, those are all red links because none of those pages have been OCR'd, um, converted into digital text, proofread, checked by anyone. It's just the raw PDF, or in this case, the Deja Vu file, of the book itself, okay? And its progress status is to be proofread. Now, if you sign up with Wikisource and you log in, you can start clicking on pages and transcribing and proofreading them. That's what we're going to do as a practical session this afternoon, right? This is just the theory. So, and that's what it looks like when people have been through and completed a book. You'll notice that all of those pages are now a lovely green color. So they start off with nothing, then they might go to red, which means it needs to be proofread, and they can only go green after two pairs of eyes have looked at each page. That's a very important fact about Wikisource. No page can be validated, which is what green means, until two different users have both checked the page and signed off on it. You can't validate an entire book yourself. You have to have at least another person involved. And that's a very important part of the community aspect of Wikisource, which is why it works really well as a group project or an editathon. And we're going to do that this afternoon with a couple of texts. We're all going to collectively work together to improve proofread the pages of a book. Okay? 
So at that point, the book one back, sorry. At that point, this is the completed book. It then can be what we call transcluded, which turns it into a proper digital book. That is a long column of text, which can be exported as a PDF. It can be exported as an EPUB, which is the standard book format for e-readers. Like you get a library book from, it would probably be an EPUB. It could be exported as Mobi, which is Amazon's own proprietary format for its Kindles. Um, or just as plain HTML, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, plain text as well. So the key thing is that because it's now a digital book, rather than just a scan of some pages or a PDF, it can be exported in multiple different formats. And that's really valuable. Let's talk about why. Okay, next please. So I set up a, when I was working at a public library, we set up a little project called the West Coast Task Force, where I was living, where we started working through books in our collection that had not been digitized, had not been scanned, um, and we had ones to proofread and validate, and it was a really nice small community project. Any GLAM institution could set up a Wikisource project like this. Most GLAM institutions have books, physical publications or newsletters, or pamphlets in their collection that are in the public domain or copyright has expired, often these are not available on in any, conveniently in any library. So there's a real access case to be made for using Wikisource to make these available. So, and uh, that's what the Wikisource team looked like. Mostly retired librarians, in fact, are really good volunteers for Wikisource. Okay. Now, what was interesting and something we realized uh, this is the software, Libby, uh, run by Overdrive, that is a, one of the two or three big dominant ebook lending platforms that public libraries use around the world. It's one of the dominant ones in the USA. It's one of the two dominant ones in New Zealand. I don't know what platform public libraries in your country use, but it's worth checking to see. Normally, the only, and people download an app and they use it to borrow books on their e-reader or their phone. And this is, if any, how many of you borrow books as e-books from a library? Well, you should do it more because there's thousands there and libraries are wonderful, okay? Um, but this is people, many ordinary library users are very familiar with Libby and it's got a very nice, easy interface for accessing books. Now, one thing that the library are not generally aware of is that as well as buy e-books from a vendor and Overdrive is the company that will often coordinate loading those ebooks and making them available. You can manually upload an ebook, a community contribution. So you want to try that? Next. You can add your own books, your community books, to your library catalog using Libby. The librarian, head librarian is authorized to do this. It's a little known feature of Overdrive, but all libraries can do this. And you just need to make sure that the work is indeed openly licensed, that you're allowed to do this. But we were able to do this with an EPUB um, from um, Wikisource, and the book is now available for loan or hold, just like any other ebook in the library catalog. And you can actually make as many copies of it. We said, let's make five copies available at once, because we can, because it's free. Now, the side effect of this is that this book now pops up in the new books listing in Libby, along with all the latest novels by, you know, Yes, for those airport authors. Um, this pops up beside it. And what we found is a lot of people, when they see this in the new books, will click through and say, oh, this is interesting, and borrow it and read it. So the reader, the, we were getting readership for this little obscure book on the place names of our local town that was far greater than it ever had when it was sitting on the shelf. Um, but most of the copies, we only had one cruddy copy on the shelf. Most were locked away in a cabinet because it was too rare and valuable to lend. So we found really interesting new readership statistics, and libraries are very good at, ca at aggregating and generating readership statistics, so they can measure the impact of this project in terms of loans by people, and in fact, this is a regional project, so it's throughout the entire South Island was that people were able to access this catalog, not just in our little town. So this is just a small example of how Wikisource can feed out and be useful and to other collections and have real
So, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, Wikisource communities are also involved in uh, different GLAM partnerships for many years. Uh, so, people of often forget that GLAM is it it includes also libraries. Most of the time, uh, we only focus on museums and not the other part of GLA. So, uh, so we are also a GLAM. Uh, partner for different uh, leading uh, libraries of the world. So uh, Wikimedia Canada first started a, a GLAM partnership with the uh, library, National Library and Archive of uh, Quebec. Uh, Wikimedia France, they started a GLAM partnership with National Library of France. Uh, I'm from Bangla community. Uh, we have a user group, West Bengal user group. We started, a, we, we actually had a GLAM partnership with the Two Centuries of Indian Print project of British Library. Um, there was a tripartite uh, GLAM partnership with National Digital Library of India, with Wikimedia Foundation and CIS. Uh, CIS also has, CIS is a partner organization in India. Uh, they have also uh, had many GLAM partnerships in India, in the, mostly in the uh, uh, western part of India. Uh, one of them is Pune Nagar Vachan Mandir, and there are many more GLAM partnerships which had happened and is happening around the world. Uh, so I'll talk about only two. Uh, so this is one GLAM partnership uh, with British Library. Uh, so they had a, you know, uh, they had a collection of uh, scanned and digitized book of early 18th and 19th century uh, 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 Bangla books from uh, uh, from Calcutta, West Bengal, India. Uh, so we decided to have a collaboration with them. They uploaded those books to Commons, and we had uh, two or three, uh, we had two proof read con contests uh, uh, in uh, 2020 and 2021. Um, and I guess those books are mostly covered right now. Uh, we also uh, this is the National Digital Library of India uh, website. This is mostly a, uh, an aggregator of. Uh, different library systems. So we collaborated with them and had a, uh, had Wikisource into their system. Uh, this is coming, uh, this data is coming right from Wikidata. They are run, uh, searching the query from Wikidata and uh, all these texts which are there in Bangla or English or any other languages which are already there on Wikidata can be viewed from their website. So we uh, get more visualizations from our more viewership from their website. So next to Agus, we can talk about something about Indonesian Wikisource. Okay, uh, if we are talking about Wikisource, we are so small community. So, but before we contribution, the things that we need to do is we need to understand the needs. Before that, data is luxury. So, Wikimedia Indonesia have a unique structure. We have no user group in our country, but we have community. It's part of six and community in different regions because every region in Indonesia have different culture and have different context of problems. So they give the, each of them a financial support for grant or project or something like that to help what project to do something. And one of the community is Wikisource Indonesia. There's two project based on project based community, Wikidata and Wikisource Indonesia. Next. So under the Indonesian Wikisource community, so we have six Wikisource like now. There's two in incubator. This one is new, quite new. Uh, it's hard in this year. Sundanese Wikisource is based on Bandung, but maybe we'll we will have some other Wikisource next month. It's only one month. So it's if we without the community, it takes so many times. So like Malay Wikisource is has been there for from 29. So to make it better, to make it faster, we make it community because every single region have their own language. To make it easier. We done some kind of competition. It's funded by the Wikimedia Indonesia to encourage people to contribute because if we doesn't do any competition, we doesn't the people doesn't know what Wikisource. Not many people know Wikipedia, especially six star project. People just know that they can read something. Right now, mo many people think that Wikipedia is written by editor, paid editor. So it's quite hard. Wikipedia is hard. How about Wikisource? So that's why we make it community to help doing the Wikisource to inquire so many contributors around it. Next. So this one, this partners, maybe is we are consist of 40 members of something like that for different region. So they have their own wiki source. 
this one from Bandung and this one from Surabaya, this one from Medan and this Denpasar, the Bayanese that uh, Citra has been presentation, this one from Surabaya. That's all from me. Yeah, Satip. Thank you so much, uh, Agus. Uh, so my, uh, I, I just have one slide here, and this talks about how uh, the Wikimedia movement uh, and the partner ecosystem has been supporting uh, the Wikisource um, infrastructure in the entire workflow of Wikisource, um, starting from pre-upload or digitization uh, and content donation. So we worked with the British Library for content donation. We worked with uh, PPIM, a research institution in Indonesia, uh, for digitization of manuscripts in uh, three different regions. Uh, we are working on improving the upload infrastructure. Uh, there is currently, we, we're, we're gonna support uh, an outreachy student to improve this tool called Book Upload Tool. Um, we have um, we have added a new OCR engine into Wikisource called Transcribus and partnered with Transcribus on that. So this, um, uh, you can see on, uh, on, on the top right corner what are some of the different things, uh, on the top left corner, what are uh, some of the different ways we have been uh, supporting the Wikisource infrastructure uh, across the entire workflow. But this is still um, just scratching the surface. So we don't have, uh, like there is, uh, not a lot of resources and something that resonated with me a lot that Bodhi shared in the morning session just before tea uh, was Wikisource is a library and it should have a catalog uh, and we don't have it. We're just using the, the search that's been built for Wikipedia uh, and that's not ideal uh, for Wikisource and the um, and with a, with a developer, a volunteer developer, they're building a catalog already and it's working in, in, uh, in Bangla uh, already, so uh, amazing work there. And similarly, annotations on Wikisource with the help of Wikidata, and um, that's also something they're they're building a tool already about. Um, and uh, something that again was really powerful is how we can use AI to suggest annotations rather than manually finding and doing it. So that uh, would be something to explore further as well. Uh, thank you so much for. Uh, your interest in Wikisource. I think uh, I just have, oh yeah, I have one more thing to share with you. Wikisource is turning 20 years next week. <laughs> so we'll be sharing some blog posts about it and how, how, you, how you can all participate in, uh, in celebrating it. For instance, we'll ask you to find your favorite work on uh, Wikisource and share it on social media. Uh, thank you so much. And any closing thoughts, Mike? So before we open it up for um, questions and discussion, which we have actually got some time for, hooray, um, a couple of things that I the wiki community is still very small. So English Wikisource has about 400 and something editors and a few But what this means is very, very friendly and uh, it's not got the same degree of animosity that you have in some of the larger projects can be a very good community for beginners to join. Um, secondly, so if you want to sell a Wikisource project to a GLAM institution, there are two questions I think they might come up with that you will need to answer. One is, if Wikisource has a library that can host works, they'll say, why is this better than just putting the work in our own catalog or in the internet archive or even just uploading it to Commons? It's available there. Why do we need to go through this whole transcription process, right? So you need to have an answer for them, and I think you can think of an answer, maybe, now. Second question that they might have is that if we want to transcribe works, why should we use this weird kind of clunky wiki community thing that's strange, rather than just use a commercial transcription crowdsourcing package like from the page, or what are some of the other ones? There's at least three that institutions have been using. Why should, we, why should we use this community thing rather than just get our own volunteers and run a transcription project on our own website? And you'll need to come up with an answer for that as well. Well, this is free, for example. That's, that's a good answer. <laughs> um, so those are two things to think about, but I want you to also think about what is, a what is an institution, a GLAM institution, that you are connected with where you think there might be a project that Wikisource could help with. And at that, I'll um, throw it open for comments, questions, and discussion. Do we have a 
mobile microphone. No, we don't. Okay. To the long side. Come up to the front if you want. Yeah. No, it's it's that much only. Yes. That's it. Yeah, I just. Okay. Uh, hi. So, um, regarding the um, the benefits of why using this and not necessarily like a, a a different system, I think the one of the biggest advantages, and especially for institutions who often lack with funding resources and technical resources, Wikisource is free to use. Uh, there's no upload limit. Um, there is also, uh, uh, like, the, there are obviously the copyright restrictions, but it's very uh, permissive in the type of, of um, works that can go in it. It's not just fiction or not just uh, nonfiction, etc. Like, it can be anything from an historical document to a novel. Um, and the, 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 the transcription, uh, um, sorry, Technology, so like the OCR recognition is really, really good. And I think a lot of institutions don't really have that technology at home uh, or like in their own uh, infrastructure. So it, it really is a boost that they get kind of for free. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of time invested in uh, digitizing books and, and, and making them available and transcribing and whatnot, but it's a very key part of the technology that can really push uh, uh, them to be more open about making uh, stuff available and digitizing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's how I would sell it to uh, a library, for instance, because not all national libraries have the same resources, and I, and all the local libraries, oh, most of the local libraries definitely don't have those resources, so uh, yeah, I think that's how I would do it. I think, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I was saying about the mic. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, let's just, let's just talk, let's just talk, yeah, yeah, yeah.